Welcome everyone. We are talking about lattice energy and what it is. So, lattice energy is all about ionic compounds. You're talking about a molecular compound or a molecule, you're talking about bond energy. But lattice energy is when the ions get together to form what we call crystal lattice. So when that happens, energy is released. If it's positive or negative ions, it will be released. How do we know that? It's going to be negative ion, positive negative ions, it'll be released. Well, if we take a look at this, what it depends on, it depends on the charges of the ion and the proportionality constant. We don't need to worry about talking about that very much as far as trying to compare one substance to another. But if this is positive and this is negative, so we have a positive and negative ion, last energy automatically is a negative number. And that makes it a stable situation where it's going to release energy, which means that the ions are going to want to get together. R is the distance between the two ions. So the closer they get together, the higher the lattice energy is because this R number becomes a smaller number. The Qs are the charges of the ions. So the higher the Q, the higher the charges, the greater the lattice energy. So it depends on those two things. It depends on the charges and it depends on the distance between the ions. Those are the two big things that we think about when we think about lattice energy. All right, so all the steps that have to happen for if I'm going to have start with a solid metal and I'm going to start with a non-metal, which is typically a gas, and I'm going to get them together and make an ionic solid. How is that going to work? Well, first of all, I need to take that solid metal, let's just say it's aluminum, doesn't matter, but any metal, and I have to turn it into a gas. Well, that's going to take energy, so that's why it's endothermic. Okay, so that step takes energy. What if I want to, then I'm going to have to ionize it. I need to get it to become an, an, an ionic gas. That's what I was going to get these ions together to make a solid. So I have the gas. If I want to ionize it, I'm going to have to add energy to remove that electron. Remember, ionization energy to remove an electron from the aluminum, say, but any metal to make a positive ion. Okay? Now I realize that if I have to make it a 2 plus ion, like, say, magnesium, I would need to remove two electrons, so it's going to need some, there's more energy going to be involved in this step. Um, the nonmetal, let's talk about that. Most nonmetals are gases, and a lot of them are diatomic, like the Hoffenbrickle and the MagSev, like fluorine. Let's just say we're talking about fluorine right now. If I want to make it a gas by itself, or just the atom, it's going to take energy to break apart that bond of the two fluorines. All right, more steps. Now I've got the fluorine, for instance. It could be any of these nonmetals. But now I've got this, and now I'll put it into the gas phase. And I'm going to add an electron to it. If we're talking about something like fluorine, adding an electron to it is going to be a very positive thing. It wants that electron because now it's like a noble gas. And that's an exothermic. There are some cases where this step is endothermic. It depends on the atom a little bit. Not every nonmetal, when it gains electrons, releases energy. Remember, release of energy means, yes, I want that electron. And then we have the formation of the solid. The metal that we formed as an ion, the nonmetal that's now an ion, getting together because it's a positive and a negative, and that is quite exothermic. And the release of this energy is what we call lattice energy, when the gaseous ions get together to make a solid. So this is an, ex this is an example of two types of compounds that are being made. Magnesium, magnesium and oxygen making magnesium oxide, sodium and fluoride, fluorine making sodium fluoride. And the reason why we even look at these two things is because we can see the difference between them. So we have just going through all the steps. So we have here the magnesium is a solid and the oxygen is a gas. Now to turn the magnesium to a gas is the only difference here. We need to put energy in. Then we're going to take two electrons away from the magnesium. And notice how it's a high ionization energy because it's two electrons. And compare that here to the sodium, which is only one electron. So the ionization energy is less to remove that one electron. All right, now the next step, we're going to turn the uh, oxygen, O2, into atomic oxygen as a gas. That takes energy to break the O2 bonds. Same thing here with the fluorine, takes energy to break the bonds. A little bit less energy in the case of fluorine. The two fluorines put together. All right, now we're going to turn the oxygen into a 2 minus ion. Like I said, some cases we have um, 
more energy is needed to go into it to make an ion, and this is one of those cases where oxygen needs energy, so energy is still going in. Uh, so the electron affinity is a positive number in this case. Fluorine has a negative electron affinity. It really wants the electron, so adding an electron is easy, and it releases energy in that case. Notice how the number is almost doubled because two electrons being added for oxygen, one electron being added for um, fluorine. So one positive, one negative also. Now the big thing at the end is where the energy is released um, every time. In this case, the lattice energy. So the lattice energy here is 3916, and here is negative 923. Why such a big difference? Well, remember our equation, lattice energy equals K times Q1, Q2 over R. Okay? So the big thing here, the distances between the two aren't as big as the charges because we should be about four times larger in that lattice energy than we are about four times larger. You might say, Mr. Notch, how do you know that? And I say, here's how I know that. I know that because the Qs. All right? We're talking about sodium fluoride, Q1 times Q2 is 1 times a minus 1. That's what the charges are on top. And we're just going to ignore the R's for now and assume those are very close. And they are. Uh, if we're talking about magnesium oxide, the Q1 and Q2 are going to be 2 times a negative 2. So the numerator is going to be 4 in that case. The numerator is going to be 1 in this case. So I can assume that the lattice energy, as long as this distance is fairly reasonably the same, and it is, I can assume the lattice energy for magnesium oxide is about four times as much, because this will be a four up here instead of a one, for the sodium fluoride. So it's about four times as much, so that seems to make sense. And that's it on lattice energy.